So I was recently on Tesla's website taking a look at cars that I really want but I cannot afford and I found these really interesting map animations and they're basically showing you the distance traveled between two cities. It's a really simple, really interesting looking map. So I wanted to recreate it today and I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects with a premium plugin called GeoLayers 3 as well as a subscription to MapTiler. Now the subscription to MapTiler allows you to really do detailed customizations to your map. Alright, let's get into it. So I'm inside of After Effects and I've taken a reference image screenshot here. This is the map of Florida. I'm going to be recreating this one. It's a path animation from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando with that mileage counter on there. So I'm going to go to Window, Extensions, and open up GeoLayers 3. And I'm going to navigate straight over to Florida, click on Create Map Comp, and then I'll quickly change some of the settings here. I'll call this Tesla Map Animation, change it to Ultra HD 4K. Now the next screen here is going to allow me to change some of the color settings and this is where I really need to try to match this reference image. Once again, you're going to need a map Tyler subscription here to get access to a lot of these features. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to really customize the map much at all. So I'm going to go select the advanced preset here and that's going to give me a bunch of different color options. You can see I have all these tool tips specifying what each color represents. So now I'm going to go to Window and open up the Info panel, and this is going to allow me to get readings of color values as, my, as I hover my mouse over different parts of this reference image. So I'm going to go over here and click on the base color, and I'm going to move my mouse over here, and I can see the RGB values. So I'm just going to manually type these in because I don't think it has a, unfortunately it doesn't have like a color picker. So 250, 250, and 252, and I can see the changes um, here. Let's change the water. 215, 216, and 221. I definitely want to change the streets to um, this gray color. Looks like there's like three different street options. I'll change them all to the gray. And I'll change the parks and woods to gray as well. And I can always go back, once I've got everything set up, I can go back and, and make changes to this at a later time. All right, I think this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. This is going to set up my map comp with all of the, you know, the anchor and get everything ready to go. Next, what I want to do is I want to bring this reference image over the map and kind of attach it to the map so that I can just toggle that reference on and off and see how close I'm getting. Now that my comp is set up here, it looks a little low res and crappy. That's the way GeoLayers works. It um, downloads like low res versions. Once you have finished uh, animating or you want to take a look at the high res, you can click on this finalize button over here. That will finalize all of your map comps. If you just want to finalize one particular frame, you hold the control key, click finalize, much faster. So now I'm going to go grab that reference image. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it directly over. And I'm going to hit the T key for opacity. Let's bring it all the way down. So now I can kind of bring it and place it over my map. So the way I'm going to line this up is I'm going to use Lake Okeechobee, this big lake in Florida. I'm going to grab the anchor of my reference image and bring it directly over the Lake Okeechobee and then I'm going to kind of move this, scale it to rough this in. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to attach it to the map so that when I move the map it sticks to it. And I'll do that just by parenting it to the Tesla map animation anchor and now you'll see when I move and I zoom out in my map comp that reference image is going to stick right to it. All right, now I want to go tweak a few additional settings here. I'll turn the reference off. You see we got a lot going on here, all these boundaries. I'm going to go ahead and finalize the frame again by control clicking the finalize button. So I'm going to go to the map comp settings here, click on this little button, and if I click on this little edit imagery, it opens up a bunch of options. So first of all is street density. We're having we're seeing a lot more streets on here than in our reference image. So here's the reference and here's ours. I'm probably gonna to need to break those roads on a different comp so I can turn down the opacity individually. But first I need to bring the density down. So I have the street density bar here. So I'm gonna turn that down to like three. I'm gonna turn off a few things here. We'll turn off land use, land cover, rail, ferries, airway, buildings, and the admin, sub and country. I'm gonna click apply. I'm gonna to have to finalize again. It's a lot of finalizing. Okay, the color of the base map and the water are looking good, but I still have the roads and these little things. So let's go back to the imagery here and see what's going on. So I'm going to go back, and it looks like that's park. So I'm going to turn off park, click apply, 
All right, you can see it's getting a little bit closer. Now, when I turn down the road density or street density, it basically takes off some of the like smaller areas away and keeps like the uh, interstates and the main roads. So now I th what I think I wanna do is, like I said before, break the roads off onto their own comp so I can control the opacity and really bring them down. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go over to map comp. There's a little duplicate button here. I'll click on that. And I'm just gonna click on this duplicate Tesla map animation and I wanna link it and I'll just rename it roads. Now I need to actually go into the map comp and turn everything off but roads. So I'm gonna go into imagery and I'll keep the street density at three, but I'm gonna turn off everything, background oceans, rivers, just make sure that everything else is off. Click apply, so now I just have those roads. And then I'm gonna go back to my main uh, Tesla map animation comp, settings, imagery, and now I can turn my street density down to zero, so I totally take out the roads on that map comp. So now it's separated. And you know what, I don't like these labels, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna turn the labels off of both, and I can do that just by clicking this little A button here on both of them. Now I'm gonna grab roads, hit the T key for opacity, and now I have control over these. Let's bring them way down, way, way, way down. Something like 15%. Now let's toggle that reference on and off. Okay, we're getting closer. The roads still look different, in my comp, you know, maybe what this designer did was put like one layer over it and did some kind of blend mode on an actual, like maybe like a luminosity blend on a white layer. So I might be going a little bit too crazy for this, but that's looking pretty close. All right, cool. Now I want to add the cities. So for this, um, you know, I have a bunch of different label templates or default templates in here. I just want to add some null layers and then attach my own objects to the null layers. So you can do this with label templates. If you go up here, these are your label templates. And at the bottom, you can see you can do null layer. So now I'm going to search for these cities. So I had, what are they, Fort Lauderdale? So I'm going to search for Fort Lauderdale here. I'm going to add it to my browser. And then I'm going to go and grab Orlando too. You know, we're not even going to worry about Fort Pierce. And then I think I can grab both of them here. And I can just do label features, add nulls. There we go. And you can see now I have a null at Orlando and a null at Fort Lauderdale. So I can, um, you know, now quickly go and grab an ellipse, the ellipse tool here, and do black. And just do a, you know, a little city marker here. Just really quickly doing this, let's do maybe 50 pixels. Call this Orlando. And I'm actually going to center this using the transformation properties of the shape element. Center that in there. And now I'll just duplicate this for Fort Lauderdale. I hope I'm spelling Fort Lauderdale correctly. And now grab all four of these position. And I'm going to connect Fort Lauderdale to Fort Lauderdale. And Orlando to Orlando. And I'm going to quickly add text elements. Um, Let's see here, click right here. And we want these to be, I think they're black, right? Yeah, Orlando, maybe make that 60, there we go. And then I'll just quickly duplicate that again. Now, since I just created these text elements, um, they're not attached to the map. So if I start animating this map, um, they're gonna get lost. So what I need to do is attach both of these or parent them both to that Tesla map animation anchor and since those points are already connected to the nulls, I don't have to worry about those. All right, now let's focus on this path. Now this is really simple. I'm gonna go over to the GLR's three panel and I'm gonna click on, uh, I'm gonna select both Fort Lauderdale and Orlando. And now down here, I have all these options pop up, one of them being connect features. So if I click on this, I have all these different options and right now it's not showing me all of them. So a little bit of a bug here. So if I bring this down, you're gonna see I can do car. So if you can't see it, just you know move this down. So I'm gonna click on car, and that's gonna create this new path here with this path here. And it's showing me the distance. I have 208 miles, 0.43, which is a little different from what I saw on Tesla's website, 195, so it might, might be a slightly different route. Nevertheless, Tesla cars can handle it. Now to draw this feature, I need to basically select a layer style to um, specify how I wanna draw it. So those are up here. I'm gonna go click on this. And then down at the bottom, uh, let me click on this one here and see what happens. Now with this selected, I'll do draw features. All right, cool. And it drew this feature here. I, ha I now have this path. This is where it starts to get a little fun and we need to figure out specifically how we want to do it. By the way, if I'm doing something that you think can be done in a better way, please share it with me. I love to learn new little tips and tricks. If someone tells me there's a much easier way to do that, uh, I always love that. That's what this is all about. I'm trying to learn some new stuff and get better at making these maps. 
Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to be using one of my favorite free scripts that's in the program here called Nulls from Paths. So I'm going to go to Window and select Create Nulls from Paths. This is going to allow me to use this little feature here which is called Trace Path. Now if I go and grab my layer, I need to search Path and actually go and grab the path because this won't work if you just select the layer. I'm going to grab Path and here I can now see the path. But if I click on Trace Path, that now adds this new um, basically null layer that's animating along the path and it's actually looping. So if I hit the U key, you can um, see that there are two keyframes here with progress. So this is what I'm going to be using to drive basically most of my animations. Everything is going to be attached to this particular setup here. So I'm going to keep it nice and neat only using these two keyframes. And one of the benefits of this, as I make changes to this particular keyframe, everything will follow along and be attached to it. So if I add some ease, or do some um, animation curves. I won't have to do it to multiple keyframes. What I need to do is grab this and go to effect controls and I need to turn off loop because I only want it to go up the path once. So now I'm gonna go and drag this. We want it to maybe take three seconds. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this path animation control. I can maybe even move this to the top. So basically everything's gonna attach to this. I want my path to animate at the same speed as this. So as this trace path uh, null layer is animating along. I want the path to animate along and that's easy enough. I can go back to the path here, go ahead and add a trim paths and then here is the end. So I want to animate the ends. So if I click on the end here you can see that's animating the path. I'm going to full screen this. Now what I want to do is grab my path animation control and hit U and all I need to do is attach the end property, this property pick whip and attach it to progress. I'll check that out. And as I said, the really cool thing about this is when I animate these keyframes, now everything's gonna stay stuck together. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the reference image back on. And for the next step, I wanna recreate this little mileage text element here with the background. So I'll start with the background element. So I'm gonna grab the shape tool and grab the rectangle tool. And I'll change the color here. I'll grab the color picker and I'll grab that red color there. And now I'm just gonna start by drawing directly over the reference image so I can kind of get it honed in here. All right, so I'll draw the rectangle and now with the same shape layer selected, um, I'm gonna go and grab the star tool and now I'll click and drag and as I'm holding it, I'm gonna hit the down arrow key and I'll hit it twice to give me a triangle. Now I can hit shift to kind of constrain it to be up, then space bar to move it. And I'm just gonna loosely kind of get it in here. Now to make it perfectly symmetrical, I'm gonna zero it out. So I'll go down to the polystar here, go to transform, and just hit zero, zero. And then I'll do the same thing for the rectangle, rectangle transformation properties, zero, zero. And now go to the center of my comp, but I'll go and grab the triangle and I'll grab the Y position. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. Now, I want to basically attach this to the path, but I want to attach it right where the tip of that triangle is. So I essentially, um, basically just need to move the anchor point of this layer. So I'm going to go grab the entire layer, and actually I'm going to rename it Text Background. And now to move the anchor point, I'm going to grab the Pan Behind tool, which is keyboard shortcut Y, grab that anchor point, and now holding the Control key, I can kind of snap it, and it will snap directly to the top there. Okay, now that's ready to go. Now for the text elements, I'm going to go grab the text tool and click in here and I'll start typing and I already actually have it set to the font that I want, the size that I want and uh, the color which is white. Now there's going to be two text elements and once again as I mentioned before if you see uh, there's a better way I could be doing this please 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 share it with me in the comments I want to learn more so the whole reason I'm doing this is so I can so I can learn something but the way I'm going to do this is two text elements and I'm going to align them so that this one, I'm going to make sure that it's aligned right. Once again, I can use the control uh, shortcut key, and that's going to snap it vertically there. And now I'll duplicate this text element, and then I'm going to type out miles. And for this one, I'm going to left align it, and I'll make sure this one is snapped as well. Now to get these um, basically as close as possible, I can go down here and select grid. And I still know that this line here is the middle of my comp, so I'm going to make sure that this is kind of equidistant on both sides. So here I have about a block and a quarter of a block and this text is popping out here. So I wanna make sure this is kind of equidistant on the other side. I can just quickly um, move it a little bit. All right, that's looking good. Now I'll turn the grid off 
and I'm going to grab both text elements, attach them to my background, and now I'll, I want to attach it to the path. So I still have my reference image on. Let me move this to the top again because it keeps getting lost here. I'm going to turn it off, and now I need to attach this to um, so that it animates along with my null layer here. So for that, I'm going to grab the text background, hit P for position, and I'm going to grab the path animation control, hit P for position, and all I need to do is property pick whip these two together. All right, cool. This is really coming together. However, the animation's looking a little janky. But since I rigged this properly, now it's going to be super simple. It's just these two keyframes here under the path animation control. I'm going to hit U, and now I can just quickly add some easy ease on this, and then just tweak it. And now look what we got. Oh, yeah. Okay, everything's looking good now. I have my animation nice and smooth. Everything's rigged up. For the final step, I need to essentially have this number climbing from 0 to 195 over the course of the path. Now, this is one of the areas where I'm not uh, a, a real expert with expressions, so if you know of a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments section um, because I want to learn the best way to do it. So Evan Abrams, if you're watching this, please uh, let me know if this is the way that you would do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to use my path animation control once again that everything's going to be attached to that. So I'm going to grab that path animation control null layer, hit U to bring up that progress bar. So I'm going to be using this progress slider to drive the counter of my text. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab my text here, and I'm going to bring up source text. And I'm going to property pick whip my source text to my progress. Now I'm going to isolate the text to see what's going on. Now as I scrub between, it's still sticking to the path and it's actually counting up from 0 to 100, but there's two problems now that I've introduced. The first being that it's this crazy decimal number. We need like a rounded out value with no decimals. And the second is that now it only goes up to 100 because that's the number that our progress bar goes up to. We obviously want it to go up to 195. So a simple math equation is going to allow us to take care of this. So I'm basically going to be adding to this expression uh, down here in my source text. So I'm going to open this up. What I need to do is first I'm going to add a, a math round expression, a JavaScript uh, little piece of code here that's going to round it up. So for that, I'm going to put my cursor at the beginning of the expression, go hit on this little expression menu here, and go to JavaScript math. And right down here it says math round value. So I'm going to click on that, and that adds that expression. And now I just need to delete the value out of here and add that parentheses to close it off here. Now as I scrub, you can see it is indeed working. Let me turn off the isolation here of this. But now I have that second problem of the fact that it's going from 0 to 100, which I don't want. Now for this, we just need to use some simple math. So. I could go back in here, and I want to put this little math equation at the end here, but still within the parentheses of my math round, um, I don't know what you call it, uh, command variable, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, times, and now we can do, um, do the long version, which is you type in 195 and then just divide that by 100. So now you can see it goes from 0 to 195. Now I could shorten this just by having this done, have, just by dividing 195 by 100 first, and that's going to give us 1.95. And it's it's essentially the same thing, just with shorter code. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I, I have a lot of fun trying to recreate some of these map animations, and this one was particularly cool. If you want to check out GeoLayers, please follow my affiliate link down in the video description. I make a commission off of all those sales, and that's a big way that I support myself and my channel, so that always helps out, and I always appreciate it. However, be aware that if you want to do this, you're going to need a map Tyler subscription account. I think that's a little confusing for some people. They'll buy GeoLayers and then they realize they need to buy this like $25 a month subscription from MapTyler to really unlock a few of the extra features in GeoLayers, including the color scheme options and being able to really dive down deep, control the street density, uh, turn off all the specific layers. You can still do some pretty intense and detailed animations with shape layers and some of the default GeoLayers features, but to really unlock the power of it, uh, you're going to need the Map Tyler subscription. A lot of people say it's kind of expensive, um, but to be honest, if you just do a couple of freelance gigs, map animation freelance gigs, I'd imagine it would pay for itself uh, just because this software is so incredibly powerful. All right, I got to stop rambling. This tutorial is going to be like an hour long. 
But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. If you're specifically interested in maps, I have a playlist called Monday Maps where I do stuff like this. I recreate other popular maps or I just show you how to use different map tools to create cool animations. So go check that out. I'll link to that in the video description as well. And Elon, if you have any Teslas lying around, hit me up. I'll see you in the next video.